Hi, this is Pro with the Dr. Vax channel. And those of us of a certain generation will remember the movie that really catapulted Dustin Hoffman into initial fame. And that movie was The Graduate. In that movie, he played a, a young guy who is just getting into the business world, who has an affair with his parents' best friend's wife. As part of that movie, there's a very famous line. A friend of the family says to the character he's playing, I want to tell you one word. You know what that one word is? That one word is plastics. The idea being that plastic, this was in the 1970s, is going to revolutionize the world. Well, plastic came and went. Today, it's viewed as potentially a biohazard, it's good, it's bad, but with new biodegradable plastics such as PLA and the introduction of 3D printers, it's making a comeback. Why? Because there's so many things you can do with plastic. It's very flexible. And now you can do them at home. It's turning cold here in the Midwest. There's already been snow on the ground. Our flowers are all dead, but that doesn't mean you can't have flowers. So today we're going to talk about printing, 3D printing flowers, assembling them, and as importantly, a trick, a sort of a tip about how to use Cura to print more reliable prints with out adding supports. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. As I indicated, we're going to cover two things today. First, I'm going to show you where to find beautiful models for 3D printed flowers and how I go about assembling them. And then second, towards the second half of this video, I'm going to cover a really interesting characteristic, a feature of Cura that makes it unique for designing prints that don't need supports. I'll show you how to use that feature. So let's start by talking about flowers. I have a variety of flowers here and different shapes and sizes. Um, they're printed on two printers, three printers really here. Some of them were printed on my Ender 5. Um, that's basically this two-part flower we're going to look at last when we talk about why this is made in two pieces and show you how to determine why in Cura. Um, the rest of these flowers were printed on either my Monoprice Ultimate 2 or my Prusa i3 MK3. So three different printers. You can print pretty much any of these flowers because they're small on any printer. So even if you're printing it on a $200 printer, maybe an Ender 3, a Monoprice Select Mini, you can print beautiful, beautiful flowers very easily. Just slow it down a little bit. One of the other things that's a unique characteristic of flowers, and you can see in these close-ups here, is that the layer lines really don't matter. Because if you look at flowers in nature, they're imperfect. So producing an imperfect flower off of a 3D printer is, in fact, perfect. So let's first look at a couple of these models. One of my favorite rose model is this model right here. And we, if we look in Thingiverse, this is from Maze and Entero, and I'll link all these models down below. And what's nice about this model is it comes with additional leaves that you can use to assemble it. Now, in this case, I assembled it with a single leaf, the bottom leaf, but we're going to show you how to assemble it with the bottom and top leaf. Now, when assembling a flower, you need a stem. Well, you can 3D print this stem, and this stem is also a Thingiverse model for another rose. This is a different rose, in this case, printed 2X, but this is sort of kitschy. It's cute, it's fun, but it's not gonna 
really look like a flower on your table because of this piece of plastic. I find a very easy way to produce beautiful flowers is to just get some old metal hangers and cut off pieces. Now you may choose to take hangers that are already a color you like, either black or silver or brown, or you may just spray paint them, paint them with a little bit of acrylic paint. Now to cut these, you have a bunch of choices. This happens to be a sheet metal shear. This will work if you have it, but you don't really need anything very fancy. Uh, this is a very inexpensive locking wrench. I bought it Home Depot, I believe. It was probably about five bucks. And at the back of many of these locking wrenches, there's a part, which is a wire cutter. And by adjusting the tension here, you can cut pretty much any wire. So I cut a segment of wire and let's assemble it together. The other thing you'll need is a hot glue gun. So we're going to first put the rows onto the wire. So I'm going to take a little bit of hot glue and I'm going to put it in the hole. This particular rose has a hole already in the bottom. If it doesn't, you could use a drill to drill a hole, put a little hot glue in and then attach it to the wire. Now, there's not gonna be any force on this. This is gonna sit in a vase, so that'll work just perfectly. Then I'm going to put my next flower petal on. Wonderful project to do with kids. Just be careful about the hot glue gun. We'll put a little more glue on there. And finally, I'll put on the bottom leaves. I'll hold that together for a minute Hot glue sets, it cools off very, very quickly, uh, but you do have to be careful about it. And now we have a beautiful rose. Add this to our vase. Now, these vases are one of my favorite 3D things to print. If we look at Thingiverse, I'll show you where I found this. These are spiral vases by Big Bad Bison. And there are a number of different models. I print these always in vase mode. Vase mode is a mode where you select in your slicer in order to print it in one pass going up. Beautiful, beautiful vases. And with some flowers, they're just even prettier. Now, another variation of a rose, which I like a lot, which is this one here, is also found on Thingiverse. Um, this rose does not have a hole in the bottom. So you'd have to either use a drill bit to put a hole in the bottom, or you could even use a soldering iron to put a little hole in the bottom, and then you can glue your wire to it. Let's look on Thingiverse at this rose. This is the printable rose flower by Gerald. Now, I printed this very fast because I don't care if it's slightly imperfect. I printed this with a 0.3 millimeter layer height that's very high, with only 10% infill, and with a wall dimension of 0.8. And then I cranked the print speed up to about 80 millimeters per second. So this printed in about an hour. Uh, this is printed in Matter Hacker Basic Red filament, beautiful, beautiful filament. These white ones are printed in a generic white PLA filament. All of these are PLA. And um, I really love this flower, and this is the flower scaled up 200%. Now, for a bit more fun, you can print flower keychains. And these are keychain tags. Um, these can also be found on Thingiverse. These are flower fobs by Muse64. Now, they're designed to spin. This was printed at a 0 0.20 layer highest on my Monoprice Ultimate 2, and they don't spin. What that means is that I either am over extruding a little bit or maybe my layer height is just a little too coarse for this mechanism. So there are a couple ways you can fix this. You can reduce your extrusion and that will allow the mechanism to freely spin. You can calibrate your temperature a little bit better. You can reduce your layer height or you can cheat. And to cheat, all you do is you blow it up a little bit because this was printed at 200%. And by printing this at 200%, the spaces between the parts also get bigger. 
not just the parts. So if you print something that's supposed to move and it doesn't, and you don't wanna spend a lot of time calibrating your slicer, just print it at a little bit bigger scale and it's likely to work. So this is a lot of fun. Now we're going to look at this flower that's printed in two pieces and it's designed to be glued together. This one is actually defective. I ran out of filament so that it was printed this way and the very tops were not printed. So the question is, why wasn't this printed just like this on your print bed? So let's turn to Cura and understand why. I'm using here Cura 4.4. Uh, the basic feature I'm going to show you has been in Cura for a long time. With 4.3, they added a feature that makes it a little easier to use. So let's go and open up our model. And this is two flower halves. And we'll see that it comes into Cura like this. The question is why? Well, if you look very carefully, you'll see a couple red spots in these corners. And if I scroll this up, rotate this up, you'll see the bottom is red. Well, any area that's red in a Cura displayed model must be attached to the print bed or have a support from that area to the print bed. So this means that potentially this little spot right over here, because you'll see it's red right here, may not print I perfectly because the overhang is too steep. Now let's talk about overhangs for a minute. 3D printers have no problem printing things that are completely vertical because it lays a layer down, put another layer on top, it's like bricks. But as that surface that you're printing rotates down so gravity is going to pull at it, it will begin to droop because there's really nothing supporting it. When it's vertical, the previous layer is supporting it. If it's completely horizontal, there's nothing supporting it. So as you rotate a model down, you need to add supports between the model and the print bed so that it doesn't droop. So let's go back to Cura and let's look at what would happen if I rotate this model around. So let me rotate this on this axis here. And then let's look and see what happens. This is all red. And in fact, even on the bottom here, this is red. Now I can take and I can select a face. This is a feature of Cura version 4.3 or later. I can click on here and say, put that on the print bed. But even in that case, let's rotate this up. You'll see that this surface here is on the print bed. All of these other surfaces are above the print bed. If we go back to our example here, this surface here on the bottom, let's do it sort of uh, this way. This surface here on the bottom is on the print bed. That's gonna be fine. This is not. And since it's not vertical, it's going to begin to droop. So if we tell Cura to slice this model now, let's go here and tell it to use support. We tell it to slice this model and then we click on preview. Look at all those supports that it's going to put on this model. There's gonna be more support plastic than regular plastic. However, if we put this back to the original orientation, let's look at that now, and supports are still on and I say slice, even with supports on, very few or no supports were added. In fact, no supports were added. And the reason is there is no angle under 60 degrees. At 90 degrees, there's no problem printing. You print one layer on top of the other. 
at 80, it's okay. At 70, it's okay. If you take it down to 60, gravity's gonna start pulling that down. Under 60, this will not print properly. And therefore you have to add supports. Okay, this is a model that I prepared just for testing supports. So we have some surfaces that you'll see are red underneath, and that means they would need support. We have others, such as this one right here, that because it's close enough to vertical, would not need a support. So we can tell in advance where Cura is going to add supports. Let's go ahead and slice this. Go to preview. And you'll see here on each of the surfaces where there was a red surface underneath, a support was added to keep the model from drooping. But for those surfaces that were closer to vertical, there were no supports. Well, folks, I hope you learned something today, something about how to assemble beautiful, beautiful flowers that you can 3D print on your printer. Once again, this flower here is special because you can print it in one hour because you really don't care about imperfections. So you could print a whole, whole bouquet of these in a few hours. They're really a, a cute thing to add to your home decor, to a special meal, or as sort of a, um, a fun gag gift for someone. And more importantly, we learned about why you would take a model and print it like this, as opposed to putting it back together and printing it like this. And the reason is the overhangs. And you can now look in Cura and determine in advance whether it needs supports. So if you have supports off in Cura and you see red surfaces, you better consider turning them on. Folks, I hope you learned something today. If you like it, give us a thanks up. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you're notified when there are new videos. Share these videos with everyone you can anywhere across the World Wide Web, and most importantly, leave me comments so we can continue to learn things together.